we have ourselves a new 2025 Audi Q7 and the SQ7 and it's not a brand new model. You would expect that after 10 years of production. This is just a, a another facelift from Audi for the Q7. But honestly, I don't think it really needs to be refreshed completely just yet because it still has all the technology. The interior looks spot on. The exterior now with the SQ7 also looks really great. So let's have a look at this article from Car and Driver and let's after this jump into Photoshop. I'm going to show you exactly the tweaks that was made. We thought it might be time for the new generation of Audi's 3 by SUV. Uh, but instead the Q7 and the SQ7 get another facelift plus new color and trim options. So uh, we expect them to co come to the US as a 2025 model. The front end looks different. We have a brand new grille here. We also have new headlights and new intakes on the side. There's no changes to the engine lineup which should still include a 261 horsepower four cylinder, 335 horsepower V6 or a 500 horsepower the v8 is still in production for the 2025 uh, sq7 fantastic news there the second generation audi q7 has been around for nearly 10 years now it's crazy to have a big suv in production for 10 years from a big automaker like audi but i think that just means that the, people are still buying this obviously and it's a great design. So you have a reshaped grille, a headlights mounted higher on the Q7's front face. Is it really? I'm not so sure. We're going to have a look at that uh, in Photoshop. You have a color framed air intakes and new daytime run lights, uh, LED uh, signatures for the identification of the Audi in the front end. And the tail lights are also new and can display different light signatures and animations as you approach the vehicle. I've said this before, Audi has always been uh, in the forefront when it comes to light design and innovation technology the Audi R8 as I'm sure you know the first one with the LED uh, face in the front end giving it a clear identity back in 2007 I do believe you have new interior upholstery options and wood and metal trim choices as well wheels ranging from 19 to 22 inches and I would a hundred percent this being the Q7 the big bulky SUV I want to have my 22s on there on my SQ7 this interior overall I like this interior but there are a couple of changes um, uh, there are a couple things that I would like to do differently here and also uh, talk about that and show you if you can spot any differences first of all from the 2021 SQ7 to the 2025 or 2024 uh, and the 2025 there's very very small changes uh, in the interior you have new app integrations for music streaming services such as Spotify and Amazon Music and here we have the beautiful SQ7. A couple of things in the grill here that I'm gonna change uh, real quick just to experiment with what that could look like. So as I said you still have the 500 horsepower twin turbo V8, uh, 4 liter V8 plus an upgraded suspension larger brakes for the SQ5 and an available torque vectoring rear dif differential. 0 to 60 in this massive piece of uh, machinery here is three and a half seconds. It's uh, pretty nuts. There is no pricing yet for the uh, new 2025 models but you can expect it as always to just increase just a little bit over the current generation or the current versions. Uh, which now started just over six or sixty thousand six hundred ninety five dollars for the base q7 and the sq7 with the v8 starts at just over ninety two thousand dollars so with that said let's jump in to photoshop here have a look at this design and what's going on here with the new q7 in this specific case we do have the sq7 here uh, the, the the current one the 2024 i think it's a it's a beautiful design it's a, it's a pretty stately looking car there is no mistaking this for anything else than an audi obviously because it does have the uh the audi grille and also i think the headlights as well is, is a strong identifier for Audi and it has been for a very long time. I do like how chiseled everything is. Look at this beautiful chamfer that we have going underneath the headlight creating a house, a home for it. Meaning that the designers put the headlight there then they created a, a, a framing for it so it has a border around it making it feel like they really intended it for I intended the headlight to sit there. I know it might sound weird but in a design standpoint it just 
makes me appreciate that even more. Then we have a grill, the typical Audi frame here with this grill. What I don't like about this design in, in this case are these bars in the middle. I think this makes it look cheap for some reason. I'm not sure why. It makes it look like a fiddly plastic piece, the whole grill section, and I'm not a huge fan of that. I would much rather, at least what we could do here is just black this entire chrome or silver piece, black it out, have it be a shadow line. I'm not sure if that's called shadow line anymore for Audis, but you know what I'm saying. Then we have these lines as well, and look at how this line is parallel with the chamfer that we have underneath the headlight, creating again more stately design. The bigger the car you're sketching in or designing in the lineup of a of a brand, the less stylized it should be. And I think Audi is following that philosophy here with the SQ7. You have some nice, very modern looking headlights still, but they got even more nuts in the 2025 refresh. Just have a look at how beautifully done this is. The thing is, the thing I, why I don't want this to go out in production and be completely re replaced uh, just yet is because I know that Audi is going to create, the next Q7 is going to have a daytime run light that sits up here, very thin, and then we're going to have a, a hidden uh, headlight in the bumper. That is going to be the next Audi Q7 and also the new Q9 that they're working on. They're all going to have this bumper headlight design and I definitely prefer this type of styling because I like this traditional layout where we have the headlights right here at the sides, we have a big Audi grille in the middle and uh, people, you know, we would talk a lot about BMW having big grills but this one is definitely bigger than most BMWs. We have a new design for the grill so you see this piece down here, this upswing right here, right in this corner of the previous uh, pre-facelift is not existent anymore because now it just goes straight into a radius and then straight up into this area and further up. So we have more of a, a corner in that lower section of the grill. We also have these ones, these intakes on the side. They look functional because it looks like we have a proper air intake here. I'm not sure if, if this section is is uh, functional as well, but it grew a little bit so it's stretched upwards into the headlight and more narrow on, on the width. So it's wider and high and taller than, uh, than the uh, previous pre-facelift. But I still think it looks good. We still have the beautiful chamfer underneath the headlight here. We have a chamfer wrapping around this intake as well, looking nice. And as you can see, it's now blacked out. The one thing that I would like to change here, you see this grill pattern here. It's very rugged or I think the mesh is just too large. The, the, it feels like they took a regular grill mesh and just zoomed in and stretched it out and just took a small piece of it because these holes are just massive in this grill. So what I would like to do is just have some sort of different texture to this grill. Smaller, more refined mesh in the middle or maybe even just have the top part be the, the bigger intake. So we have something like, like this. I'm not entirely sure, but I do want to do something with the grill because I'm not a huge fan of these massive holes that we have in the grill. Maybe it will grow on me. Maybe it will look a lot better in person as it usually does when I talk about car designs. Looking at the side view, and I want to welcome Audi here to the wheel game because they've been uh, missing for a while since the 2014 uh, Audi RS7 and the RS models of the mid 2000s when they had the five spoke designs. Beautiful, subtle, very cool looking designs. They, they were just 19 inches, but since we had that design, it looked like they were 22s and just filling out the entire wheelhouse. And it, they've been lacking a little bit in the wheel game for a while now, in my opinion. I think BMW and Mercedes are the, the kings of wheel design from factory. But here we have brand new wheels. And I do, I do like these wheels. I think still they look for the SQ7. I think they still feel more elegant, maybe. It, they don't have this, this sporty touch to it that I would like to see on an SQ7. I'm not sure if I like the previous ones better. These look pretty weak because this spoke is so thin. It looks like it's gonna break as soon as you just hit a curb or something like that. So I do prefer the new wheels, but I do wish they had more of a sporty vibe instead of this luxury feel that I'm getting from them right now. Other than that, if we look at the line flow here, again, this being the Q7, the big one, we want to have a clear shoulder line, clear uh, two box proportion in this 
in this case because we do have a an SUV layout meaning that we don't have sort of a trunk in this design but we want to have a proper clearly defined two boxes I love this shoulder line because we have exactly what I want to see in a traditional car design specifically in a traditional German car design to have the shoulder line be connected with a just straight line that cuts right through here into the corner from the corner of the headlight right into the corner boom right here into the taillight we also have a nice muscle over the rear axle here you can see this reflection we have some sort of bulge going out there in addition to this very wide fenders i do love that these pieces here these plastic pieces are now painted not sure yeah they were that in they were painted in the 2023 as well this new color looks fantastic sort of like a almost military green style for this car overall a fantastic looking design again from audi and this is one of the reasons again why i don't think they really need to completely refresh the uh, sq7 and the q7 just yet looking at the rear view before we jump in and have a uh, talk about uh, the interior this is probably where you can see the least changes on the exterior yes we do have brand new uh, tail lights you can see them right here and I'm not sure if I prefer these these look very robotic super futuristic still even though this these are actually the old taillights now we do have a big diffuser in the bottom with the quad tailpipes I hope they are functional I do know Audi has a tendency to sometimes just put exhaust in the rear for example in the SQ5 and it doesn't have any functions at all but I do believe if we're gonna have a big V8 in the front and the four liter twin turbo v8 i it makes sense to have some proper exhaust in the rear everything here down here is blacked out in in, in contrast to the more silver one that we have in the previous pre-facelift i do think that is a package you could probably option the 2023s to be all blacked out which is definitely something i would do brand new taillights here these look a little bit more simplistic but as as they said in the article these are these can be animated and show you all types of um you know uh, dances inside of these leds which i think it's a pretty cool idea it adds some more personality to the car without ruining the, the proportions of the car and that is what i think the sq7 specifically does very well last but not least here the interior now look at this uh can you see any changes in the facelifted version which is by the way down here uh, I don't see anything different in, in this interior. What I like, let's start with what I like about this interior uh, of Audis these days. I l absolutely think this gauge cluster is one of the best gauge clusters in the entire car industry today. They are made by Audi because we can customize this exactly like we want it to be. We can have a full map here. If we want to, we can have it split like this. We can have it in sport mode, classic mode, whatever you want to do. And in addition to that, we also have this beautiful housing for it, which gives it a more classic classic more elegant more upscale look than if we were to just have this big screen like this I 100% prefer this so the couple of things that I'm, I'm not so sure about here I do like if we just take away all the textures and the materials of this it's a fantastic looking interior but now that we add this piano black that Audi seems to be obsessed with in their cars this surface here it, I, I need this gone I, do, I don't want this i rather have more of maybe like a polished aluminum look or maybe even some sort of soft touch fabric this just feels a little cold to me but we still have the carbon fiber down here looking at the new one as again the, i can't see any differences here even the seat color seems to be the same in these uh, specific press photos but you can see that we do have the same type of steering wheel with the flat bottom the gauge cluster thankfully not been touched and that is something that i am afraid is going to happen with the next generation q7 that they're just going to go ahead and minimalize everything fire the interior designers and just hire some consumer electronic designers and put an ipad on the dash what i do like again is that we do have everything being digitalized which in this case in audi's case i've driven a lot of these audis recently uh, the new ones with this type of layout and i i don't really mind having the the touch screen for the uh climate control settings because it is separate completely separated screen so we have three screens the gauge cluster infotainment screen and a dedicated screen down there for 
the most important settings, the climate controls. And it actually works really well. It also, it's, it's positioned in a way that when you're leaning your hand on the, the gauge, uh, the, the gear selector here, it's very easy to just fill around and touch whatever you need to touch very quickly. And I think Audi has done a great job incorporating bo both the digital world that we have today with screens and stuff and pixels with a more ergonomic feel still and make it easy to use. But again, the piano black comes back here. So let's just remove this and put in some nicer, less shiny materials. Overall, I think Audi has done a great job uh, just refreshing the SQ7 for 2025. I don't think, as I said earlier, I don't, I don't want this to be replaced just yet because everything feels extremely modern still. And again, that just shows how well of a design the, uh, this generation Audi Q7 was from the start.